hello quilty friends welcome back to my sewing room and this is for um, sew your stash series hometown blocks that we've been doing five inch and ten inch size and this is for block six so let's just go through the ten inch ones real quick again so there's number one here let's do it this way there's two There's three, there's block four, and there's block five that we did last time. And now this is six, okay? And six, this is really fun and easy to do. I love this block and it's just squares and rectangles. So we're just, for the five inch size, we're using one and a half inch squares and one and a half by two and a half inch rectangles these four, and then for the 10 inch size, we're using two and a half inch squares and two and a half by four and a half inch rectangles, okay? So let me just show you that I have 12 of these done so far, and then plus, of course, the four that go into our quilt. This is our, this is our quilt. If you're doing the hometown sew along, this is the quilt that we're doing, and this is where all of the blocks go in the quilt, these piece blocks, and so this is one through 10 right here, and then because there's four rows, we do this same block four times, but we do it in different fabric. So like here, here it is in this fabric. Here's block one in this fabric. Here's block one in this fabric. And then here's block one in that fabric. So that's how we're doing the 40 blocks. There's 10 different blocks, four of each of the 10 blocks to make 40. But to recap, if you haven't been watching this series, we're up to block six now. But I am making, I'm making several of these blocks out of my hometown fabric, and I'm making a king-size quilt for my bed. And so that's why I'm making multiples of these as well at the same time that I'm showing how to make the blocks for our quilt. And so this is what, this is what the five inch looks like. So let me set that there so we can have that for a sample. And I'll just go through these again and show you the 12 that I have done in the five inch size so far. What's fun about these blocks is um, the rectangles can really, depending on the coloring, okay, these are kind of similar in coloring, but see how this X or this plus, not X, this plus really stands out because it's a strong color. And this pink is a soft color, so it recedes into the background. Well, this is just kind of opposite, meaning look how these pop out because they're red. And so these are yellow, so it kind of recedes back in and it just kind of gives a different look to this block according to color placement. And so that's kind of fun. Before you put that one in your quilt, there's a mistake on it. These two. Oh, you're right. Oh, <laughs> oh thanks for telling me. Now, if Cassidy wouldn't have told me, I know all you guys would have. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to put this one in the bottom of the stack so I'll remember. Well, in fact, I think I'll just put it over there. Okay, so here's that same kind of, see how dark that is? And then that light recedes in there. And here's another dark one with this and then dark in the corners. And I just, I like the placement of this. This is one you can just play with like two different colors, basically. There is some, you know, brown in there, but the yellows and greens are kind of fun. And... Here's one that this kind of even. There's not a lot of contrast between these colors, but I think that's really pretty. And so it just, you know, it just matters block placement. I mean, excuse me, color placement in the different sections. Now I, I got to stack these back and make sure that I have all of these in the corner. Because look, if I would have checked to make sure I had those in the corner, I wouldn't have made that mistake so now it's gonna make it's gonna bug me until I go through all these oh good okay that's the only one and then that's good and then obviously the 10 inch one was right or we would have noticed that right off because it's big okay so what we need for the five inch size is once again we need first you need to out of your scrappy bin that you've cut you need to grab one and a half by two and a half inch rectangles and just one and a half inch squares. And so I have four of those rectangles and then I need one for the center 
So there's a one one and a half inch square. And then I made four one and a half inch squares and four one and a half inch squares for, for the little four patches right there. And then out of the backgrounds for this block, we just simply need eight one and a half inch squares. So let me grab five. Okay, I think that's eight. All right. Okay, so what, how we're going to do this block is very, very simple. Oh, and we're, of course, using the five and a half inch trim it ruler for the finished size here. See how it lines up very nicely within those, within those lines and nothing is sticking out. I need to put this on the ironing board because, where it's harder. But anyway, so that looks good there. And then for the two and a half, that's what the four patches measure. So we're going to be using the two and a half and the five and a half. And so the first thing that we need to do is just take these four for the four patches, the background square, and these four, the other color for the four patches. And we're just simply going to sew these squares together. And I think I'm going to turn on, have Cassidy turn on the music as I start sewing these. I'm sewing with uh, Miss Doris again today, named after Doris Day. And I'm just using my Seam Sew Easy Guide right here for the quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm just going to run these through and sew a background square to each of these eight squares. So while I'm waiting for those little um, segments to sew into the four patches to cool, I've got my design board out here to make sure I don't make a mistake on this. I'm going to lay it out. Sometimes I think it's such a simple block and then I can't believe I end up making a mistake, but it, you know, just happens to all of us, it happens to the best of us, right? And so what we can do is sew this into a row, but we have to wait to sew these until we have the four patches finished. So I'm just going to continue on with my little bonus square, sewing one and a half inch squares together. Throwing that in there to be pressed, and then I can add this rectangle to the other side. Now remember, the 10 inch blocks are sewn the same exact way, and I have the cutting for both. I have the cutting recipe for both of them in this video description. So always make sure you read the entire entire thing so that you can see everything that I'm talking about in this video and get really handy dandy links to things. Okay. Let me set my seams in this. I'm going to open it up. Use my ruler, press it, and then I'm going to use this, but I'm going to use this cool side because this is still warm a little bit. I don't want to put warm onto that already. I want a cool side, okay? And then I'm going to pull these up. 
I'm going to make sure they're all going the same direction, which they are, and bring them over here, and then I'm going to flip them like this. And I know I just put right sides together and go ahead and sew. All right. Now, I, as I've shown you before, when I'm doing patchwork, I always make sure that it's lined up right here. I don't pin unless I have to, unless I feel it's necessary, but I just start right there. And then I look at the next seam of where it needs to line up. And then that's, that's all I worry about next. And I run that through the machine. And then I make sure that these corners are lined up. And I just hold it and, you know, I'm the boss of my own quilt. So I'm the boss of my own quilt pieces. So I make it work and I make it line up. Because this is cotton fabric, it has some give because it's not, for me, um, heavily starched. I don't like heavily starched personally. I know it works, a, you know, great for a lot of people and that's great. And if that's what you like, but I happen to like a little bit of give in my fabric so that I can you know, line things up, and uh, if they're starched really heavy, there's no more give left, and I want to be able to have a little bit more control. I guess I'm a control freak when it comes to my patchwork. <laughs> now, if you want to pin, you can just grab, let me start this, you can just grab uh, one of my double pins like this, okay, and I just make sure this is lined up here, and I just barely poke right there on both sides through both layers and so that that holds that on both sides of the seam and there's no way that can shift as I run it under the machine, okay? If you don't have any double pins, just use two pins but and do the same thing and just barely poke them in. But I find the double pins are very handy for that reason. Oh, let me run one of these through so that I can cut that apart. And then I'm going to bring these over here, set the seams. I always try to remember to set the seams. Sometimes I forget, but I think it really helps just to kind of get things flat. And I'm just going to set this back over here. And then I always try to remember to use my rollers, but I especially remember when I've got intersections like this so that that gets flat right there. And when I say, I think I said rollers, but I mean roller. <laughs> and um, when there's a lot of layers and when the intersections are lining up there with those seams, I really like to take that. And the reason I'm pressing it is, you know, the iron's gonna iron it down too, but the reason I'm using a little bit of muscle and pressing that down, that wood roller, it opens those up all the way. and you know, you'd be surprised how much that helps with the flatness of your block. And if you have a flatter block, and uh, it's just going to help with the accuracy more. Okay, so I'm going to set that up there. And now that these seams are open all the way, I can just go ahead and press. I try not to iron my patchwork. I try to press it because if I iron it, it distorts things. And because it is cotton and it has a memory, if you're ironing back and forth like this a lot, like in big strokes, you're going to distort that. And um, that's not going to be good. Okay, I'm going to use the clappers in the back that I haven't used yet. And then while we're letting that cool, I'm going to show you the back of this block. It's just all the seams are pressed open on this one. Okay, and it's nice and flat. And then also, even though I've got um, bigger pieces of fabric on the 10 inch block, it's still, I still press it open. It's just as easy to press it open. And see how nice and flat that block is. I don't know if you can get a side view of that. <laughs> but anyway, and so we're just going to let that cool for a minute. So I've done that. I know I've mentioned that before, but I have got a few questions about what does the back of my 10 inch blocks look like. So while we were waiting for these to get out of the oven, the clapper oven. So now I've got these and I've tried to make them so they're going all the right direction, which obviously I didn't do on that one. But 
on the one that I had the mistake. But this is where I want to decide which one I want on the outside and which one I want on the inside, meaning I can either have that like that so that there's four yellow squares right there. I'm going to let Cassidy choose. So that's what that looks like. Or I can turn it around like this and have them the pink coming out. Which one did you like the best, Cass? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I like the choose. pink on the inside. Like that? Yeah. And then it's stronger on the outside with the yellow. Okay. Yeah. So now we're just going to sew these together into rows. And then I'm going to sew the entire block together. Okay. So I think I'll speed it up a little bit and turn on some music. All right, so now I've got this right here all sewn. Okay, I've just got to press those seams, but before I do that, I always look and make sure this is all lining up in the center. And I'm gonna check for sure to make sure these are in the corner and these are in the inside corners there. And then I can go ahead and do the final press. And use this seam roller on all the intersections. to get those seams opened up all the way. So that all I have to do now, when I'm doing double seams like this, I kinda like to make sure that nothing's gonna get folded under there. And then notice how I'm just picking up the iron and putting it back down instead of doing that because if I'm ironing, again, I'm gonna fold my seam allowances back how I don't want to. Okay, that's nice and hot. I'm gonna use a cool side. And then use extra weight to get that absorbed quicker. And I don't know why I always have to put that on top, but it's kinda like the cherry on top. And we're gonna let that cool for a minute. 
and let's see I thought that I could answer a question real quick so I've had a couple of you ask because I have my sewing space right here you know I have everything that I need that there's plenty of room it's not that squishy but <laughs> it's not squishy at all I love how it is and I love that how I have my table that is table height see how it goes under here this countertop and then this is countertop height so I can stand and cut at countertop height so my back doesn't hurt but this gives me a little extra room under here to tuck things under and then I've got my drawer here and I've got my little storage squares under here for my bonus quilting you know different projects that I have going on oh that one's empty sometimes I have all things going in there but a lot of you have asked how when I sew rows together or I'm sewing a large quilt together like where does that go because I have such a small space here well remember yeah this is just this small space for small blocks but look at this over here let me set this over here okay look over here I've got this whole counter and all I have to do is move this stuff out of the way and when I have quilts that I'm sewing rows the half of the quilt or the rows is actually more convenient to hold it up there and then I can just pull it down and sew. And so it's like having this great big table here and just because it's six inches higher or eight inches higher, you know, it doesn't matter. It just holds it up for me and actually having it higher helps me a little bit more to keep it up instead of dragging the weight down, if that makes sense. I know that those of you who have a big quilt when you're sewing rows together know what I mean, how it just kind of the weight of it drags down off an edge of a table. So this is very nice to have this up on the top. And so I don't find it inconvenient at all. I find it very convenient. I like being by the window so I can see outside when I'm sewing and I like being in the corner of the room so I can just kind of see everything and I'm just kind of that way. I'm a person who likes a corner table in a restaurant, the back seat in the movie theater. <laughs> I just like to see everything that's going on and I guess I'm just a curious person, I don't know, but so that's why I enjoy having this in the corner in this little space here so that I can have everything where I need it. Oh, that's been on there for a couple of days. <laughs> and, uh, and so that's how I work out and why I have, you know, work that out and why I have it set up here. Okay, so there's the block right there. Okay. That's what the back looks like. And let's see how we did here. So I've got my lines going across. This one is one that could easily, you may need to trim some off because they're squares, you know, and they're just a little bit wider. So I am seeing right here on this side, see right here, how I could trim this off. And so I'm just going to, I'm just going to grab this mat, and I know that's where I need to trim it off. I'm going to put it on an angle, grab my rotary here, put it back on the lines that it needs to be lined up to. See how you can see this line, this line, that line, that's all good. And this right here needs to be trimmed off. So I just take that, trim it off. I'm going to turn it around to the other side to make sure that that was, that was, see, that can be trimmed off in the middle too. So I might as well just go ahead and do all four sides because I know that I can go from this line out. This is the last side. And just look at your lines and make sure everything's lined up. Now, because I trimmed everything, this all lines up around those three sides. And this is the last one. And then I've just got that nice and squared up. You know, it's just a little sliver that I've cut off. But when you go to sew these blocks together, it makes a difference when one is a little bit bigger than the other one. Then you have to pull out your ruler, which you can do, and say, okay, which one's too big and which one's too small. So you kind of know which one, you know, to gauge by. And so that's how I use those trimmets. Here's my cute little block. There's the 10 inch, there's the 5 inch, the cutting recipes. 
are in this in this uh, video description. And thank you again for joining me in my sewing room and for chatting with me. And I love sewing my blocks and showing you how to sew them because it's like you're right here with me and I really enjoy that. And um, I will be back in a few days and I'll show you how to make the hometown block six. I'll chat with you later. Okay, oh my heck, Cassidy just told me that was block six, which I know it was. I'll be back in a few days to show you block seven. Okay, now I'll chat with you later. Love y'all. Bye.